Let's get into our last discussion for the day. Documenting information is one sure way of preserving history. And here in Nigeria, the rich culture and traditions of the people have been passed down from generation to generation through artworks, books, and films. One such book is the British influence, Footprints in the History of Yaba, Lagos, written by Shigu Oshile is an, as an expository book which unearths the unique community named Yaba in Lagos State. It is not only captured, uh, or it didn't only capture the details of the history of Yaba, but also the political, socioeconomic, and the cultural life of the people of Lagos State. That is what we'll be talking about next. And I have a copy of that book here, really interesting. And I, I can't wait to devour all parts of the book. Joining me is in the studio to talk about this, and the book is the author, Dr. Shegun Oshile. It's nice to have you join me, really. Thank you. Great. Now, when we talk about Lagos, Lagos has so many sides to life that it means different things. In fact, Lagos is now becoming a metaphor, not just a place. But what really makes Lagos thick? Well, Lagos seems to be the center of everything. Mm. Um, if you're looking at um, the time immemorial, yes. pre-colonial, colonial, Lagos is where everything happens. Mm. Governance, decisions, and everything. Even commerce. Because um, you find out that people who claim to be Lagosians today, mm. most of them came to Lagos based on commerce bases. Mm. So the Jebus, the Egbas, the people from Ilori, all came to Lagos to the marinas to do their trading because they had to do trade uh, with the Europeans mm -hmm. and then a lot of them ended up settling in Lagos. So basically that's what really makes Lagos what it is today. Okay, uh, I, I'd like us to break it down into how commerce shaped Lagos on one hand, how culture shaped Lagos on the other hand, how politics shaped Lagos all on the other hand. But let me ask this question first. There are some people who say that Lagos is no man's land because of the collection of people, even those who are not originally Nigerians who are here, but they're here to, they're, they're here to stay. Uh, it, can Lagos be said to be no man's land in that context, really? Well, um, one very important thing, hmm. which I keep telling people, anybody can claim Lagos okay. based on constitution, based on a lot of reasons and um, so what is most important mm. is if you claim you're a Lagosian, one of the first things you want to ask is what's your Oriki? <laughs> so if you What is Oriki? Oriki is like a lineage, like what your oh, household. Oh I see. So once you have an Oriki, then you can trace it to a lineage. Oh I see. And say, yes, this is where your parents, your lineage, your great grandfather emanated from. Mm. So it's very, very important. So, that, so that, is how to sieve, that is how to sieve the real Lagosians yeah, and those it. who are coming to stay. Yeah, that's just it. Amazing. Yeah, that's Amazing. just So how many Orikis do we have in Lagos? Uh, quite a number. Okay. A lot of them from the Lagos Island, they have their Orikis. But if you listen to it very well, most Lagosians today, a lot of them stem from Ileife. Hmm. So anybody who is la resident in Lagos today, basically has their origin from Ileife. Hmm. So it all started from Ileife. And then most people migrated to Lagos based on divination. For example, today we have Isheri. We have Awori. Hmm. People don't understand what it means. Isheri is Isheri. And then Awori is Awori. Hmm. But because of the pronunciation, is being nomenclated to be Isheri, Isheri and then Awori. <laughs> Right? But all it right. all has its history. Okay. So I could just summarize it just in two, three minutes mm. to, I mean, give people an insight as yeah. to what Isheri means mm -hmm. and a worry. Okay. So you had people from Ife. And you know that before Christianity and any form of religion came to Nigeria, mm -hmm. it was more of divination. You had yeah. the Ife priests who tend to predict what is happening, what is going to happen, mm. and what it's going to be. So people who were going to leave Ileife, they were coming to Lagos. There was a divination predicting what was going to happen because mm. most of them traveled by the waterways. Okay. And then part of it, the prediction was when you get to a point, there's going to be turbulence. And then when you get to that point, there's going to be turbulence. The Ishe, Ishe is a Yoruba form of 
um, is a metaphysical um, wrap okay. which I mean takes care of a lot of things and the dish in which it is packed mm. is the awo. Okay. Now they predicted that at a point there's going to be turbulence and when you get to that point the ishe would fall off the kennel mm. and then with the plate itself the awo mm -hmm. and then when it drops you would not see the isha again mm. but the awo will float mm. when you get there that is an indication that that point is a point of settlement i see so you have some of your men stay there and then so in yoruba they call the place ojubo mm. right so they left and then they continued the journey so some came down and that is today known as the sherry Mm -hmm. They continued the journey, and then at some point again, they predicted that there's going to be another turbulence. And when you find that turbulence, it occurs, the plate now is going to sink and never to float again. Hmm. At that point, you have gotten to your final destination, and that is a worry, which seems to be the origin of the negotiations today, and which is at that point you have the auto Edo access. Wow. That's interesting. Interesting story. Now, the story of our past and our history is always very interesting. But talk to us, basically, what is the inspiration behind this book? I, I know that from, from, the, from the title of the book, it, it's really interesting already. But talk to us, share with us your experience. What really gave you that um, inspiration and push to write the book? Well, it's a multifaceted um, factor. Hmm. So first... My great grandfather, grandfather, father all lived in Yaba. Another reason is my father was the first Bali of Yaba. Mm. And then the third reason was I found out that there was paucity in the information regarding Yaba. So quite a number of people say so many fascinating things about Yaba, but it's not documented. So I had to go on a journey of having to correlate these facts. As that yesterday, somebody was still arguing with me that when Queen um, Victoria came to Nigeria, mm. she lived on Queen Street in Yaba. And I'm like, even when the Europeans never lived on Yab in Yaba, why would the Queen live in Yaba? And this was because there was a building which was supposedly built, and they said that was where the Queen stayed. Mm. But of course, I had to find out and found out that when Queen came to Nigeria, she stayed on the island, she stayed somewhere in Victoria Island. You know, so... I was able to correct a lot of wrongs. Hmm. Another yeah, a lot of misconceptions. Misconceptions. Hmm. Another misconception was uh, there is a particular mosque in Yaba. Hmm. It's called Motala Mohammed Mosque. And that mosque to date is the only Hausa community mosque in Yaba where prayers are made within the mosque and outside the mosque. Hmm. And growing up, even to date, a lot of people have this misconception that uh, General Murtala, late General Murtala, was assassinated on the way to the mosque. Hmm. And that is why it is called Motala Muhammad Mosque. So I had to do my findings. And my findings did not only stop at the mosque. I extended it to the daughter hmm. to find out, can you just grab me a bit of insight as to what happened? And then she said she was only three when her father was assassinated. She needed to find out from her mom. And she did and told me, no, my father was assassinated somewhere in Nikoi, hmm. very close to the immigration office, the passport office. And it was about 9.30 in the morning. And then the Muslim prayers at about 1.32 in the afternoon. So I was able to clear that in the book. Well, when it comes to Murtala Muhammad and the details of how he was killed and, and, and uh, all of that, uh, or assassinated and so on, I believe it is, it's relatively it's recent enough for Nigerians to even know where and how it happened because it was just in the 70s here but the point there is you you the footprints in the history of yaba lagos now what makes how significant is yaba in in the in the, in in lagos let me put it that way yaba seems to embody everything you want in lagos wow so we start with the educational system hmm. so education started from yaba we talk about the tertiary institutions in Nigeria. Mm. The first tertiary inst institution in Nigeria, people think it's Yaba Tech, but I tell them no. It's the School of Health Tech, established by Dr. Oladipo Oluwale in 1920. Wow. It's on Harvey Road. Wow. It was, cool. it, was, it, was, it was set up to take care of infectious diseases and all of that. 
After which we had Yaba Tech in 1934. And then the name changed. It was Yaba Higher College in 1934. Mm. And then the name changed to uh, Yaba Tech in 1947. After which, the University College Hospital, UI, was mm. established. Wow. Aside that, currently Yaba has six tertiary institutions. So we have um, Unilag, mm. University of Lagos, which was established in 1964. We have the School of Health Tech in 1920. Mm. We have Yaba College of Tech in 1932. Mm. We have um, f um, Federal College of Education. We have Federal um, School of Science and Technical College, mm. in, all in Akokan Yaba. Now Yaba has the first tertiary uh, private institution in Nigeria, that's St. Timothy College, mm. all in Yaba. All in Yaba. So I put anybody to the strictest proof to tell me any community in Nigeria today that has such a number of institutions, mm. both primary, secondary, and tertiary. Currently, we have a total which, of, of course, is not documented, of over 48 secondary schools in Yaba, just in Yaba community on its own. Mm. I have not included the private schools. And then we have about 38 public primary schools, all in that community. Wow. It's really amazing. Um, I, I wish we had more time to talk about areas of politics and uh, cultures of Lagos and all of that. But something that strikes me here is the do you do, do you know section which uh, comes on one of the pages ba behind here and there's a long list of uh, uh, did you know here w what is most significant of why did you come up with did you know uh, segment on this alone because this is really interesting so did you know stem from the fact that there are so many information I garnered mm. from or oral interviews okay. and then from documented um, interviews. Mm. And then I found out that a lot of it might just be submerged in the book. So I had to create a section mm. that would shed more light on it, and then you might end up going to the chapter to look for it. To look for it. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Do you know that late Chief Frederick Rotimia Alade Williams was once lived at number 10 Old Yaba Road in the 60s? Oh, this is interesting. A late Chief uh, Folari Oshile, that's, the, that's your dad? My, my dad, yeah. Okay. It was the first ballet of Yaba. Uh, that was in 1995. That's even uh, relatively recent, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, the first uh, filling station uh, office in 1950 in Nigeria is still located in Yaba, Mulaya Street, isn't it? Yeah, still there. So, so much uh, to talk about in here. Now, let's, before we go, how, what, when it comes to the history you put together in this book, what is the take home at the end of putting this together? Well, first and foremost, we need to preserve culture mm. and history. Okay. It's very, very important. And then document a lot of information. Because, um, like you said, a country, a community without culture and history mm. definitely has lost its value. Yeah. So this is just... Um, for generations to come. Mm. And then it's also good for researchers because every information here is documented and is referenced. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Shegu Oshile, for, the, for this that you put together. It's really an amazing and it's, it's really strong. Thank you very much for everything you've done in this book and more that you're even doing as well. Excellent. We hope to have more of you so we can you know, bring up aspects of the book that uh, we may not even have touched at all. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thank you.